All right. Um, so it'll come as no surprise to anyone in 2015 that we live in an age of abundant data. There's big data, we all hear a lot about that. There's small data, there's everything in between. Um, and it kind of pervades the world around us. This particular image, some of you may have seen in the New York Times a few days ago um, by Scanner out of London, um, about the dreams of driverless cars. Data is everywhere, whether we know it or not. Data comes from people, people as individuals, people in their communities. People have devices, those throw off data. Devices, buildings, neighborhoods, cities, countries. They throw off data by the megabyte, by the gigabyte, by the terabyte. <coughs> Increasingly, we're able to sense things we couldn't sense before. We're able to understand things that were beyond our understanding, and we're able to respond to them in new ways. We're responding to people, to behavior, to environments. And this helps us solve problems, but it also helps us create new value in new ways. That said, complexity, and even new complexity, brings great opportunity, but it brings many, many problems, many, many questions that we need to grapple with, and we need to grapple with critically as we work to engage with them and sometimes just embrace them. Hi, Daniel. So, the question is how do we tackle those questions? Uh, the answer is with human-centered design. And what we mean by that is human-centered design has traditionally looked at products, things you sit on, things that are uh, anthropomorphic. Uh, but we're suggesting that this can be applied at all scales, at any scale. And the idea of tackling things at multiple scales is not new, but the idea of tackling things at every scale all at once and seeing what the opportunities can come from those interconnections is what we think is new. In order to undertake this endeavor, it will require a new mindset. That means uh, not only new skills, but really uh, what we uh, term a transdisciplinary trans mindset. And then uh, that also suggests an opportunity for new processes. So uh, whether that's uh, dynamic, inclusive in nature, parametric, uh, uh, ways in which we can embed more in the way we go about doing things. New methods. They're required, they're needed to be responsive, to be able to iterate, and to ultimately be engaging uh, uh, in the work that we do. And then collaboration. No individual, no firm arguably, has the capacity to deal with every scale, so we need to have deep and true collaboration. What that suggests is new models of cooperation uh, to underpin this process. So, with that, there's an uh, ability to engage in new types of connecting, creating new ways in which we, uh, we solve problems, engage in the world around us. For example, physical plus digital. You, uh, you uh, see here, backdrop, uh, Pittsburgh smart parking. They were the first city in the US to engage in uh, that process, being able to refill your meter without the last minute sprint and juggling for coins, looking for car parts without circling the block. So uh, the ability to tie a physical realm, physical environment to uh, the nature of uh, the digital one. That also plays out in this example, uh, Beacon, a project undertaken by Arab and Frog Design that looked at taking analog infrastructure, the old uh, telephone network, payphone network, and seeing what the opportunities uh, could be if you started to layer connectivity to that. And uh, as an example, uh, not only are you uh, getting communications and so forth, but an ability to adapt and perform at multiple uh, level. So, for example, in times of 
uh, high risk disaster, uh, that platform can serve as a new means for communication and uh, information uh, uh, delivery. Hard systems, soft systems, that can be taken quite literally as uh, tying hard concrete gray infrastructure with, uh, with green infrastructure landscape uh, as, as demonstrated in a uh, number of the projects uh, with Rebuild by Design and uh, MAS initiative that I, I participated in. But what was interesting about that particular initiative that it also suggested another interpretation of that uh, dichotomy, that uh, hard infrastructure as in physical versus soft, the idea that you can have layers of programming, layers of activity, very much uh, as, as we've talked about today in order to activate and make uh, these interventions more responsive. Now the suggestion is, uh, what is the uh, data layer that, uh, uh, that kind of fully utilizes that? And if you can imagine taking that uh, beacon example and overlaying it that with, uh, with a kind of resiliency uh, uh, tie-in and you, would, you, would, you can already see the opportunities that arise. And then human scale, system scale, the suggestion that uh, in having that data set that you're not dealing with uh, problems one house at a time, that you can deal with it comprehensively, whether that's at a scale of a city, district, or uh, a region. And uh, another example being, uh, uh, in this case, it's uh, the Det uh, Detroit uh, initiative to, let me see my, uh, at uh, uh, Detroit initiative to look at uh, uh, housing and uh, across the city that apologies uh, uh, and crowdsource uh, information that uh, in order to get a better understanding and mapping of the city and how to uh, then use that platform to uh, bring in the community to, uh, uh, to participate and act. Human scale, system scale, uh, the idea that uh, you can also take, uh, in uh, looking at these things, that there are multi-dimensions uh, to them, so that uh, in the case of Rockefeller's uh, city resiliency framework, that uh, that it's not just about physical infrastructure that could uh, help with resiliency, but also understanding multiple dimensions of uh, social, economic, cultural infrastructure that all go towards the same thing. So as we gain these new powers of sensing and of processing, we are, we're able to make better and more design decisions. We're able to make decisions based on what we know of how things work, because we can sense them. We're able to make better decisions based on how we think things are going to play out, how complex, interconnected systems are going to react both to externalities and to our design interventions. That allows us to unlock latent value, value that's been there but been locked up. Suddenly, we're able to access it and leverage it. It also allows us to create new value that previously was out of reach. As with any great new power comes great responsibility. As, we, as any design intervention uh, privileges some, disenfranchises, it fr disenfranchises others. And so as we gain new insight into how that works, how that impacts the communities that we play in, comes great responsibility to be aware of that and to be careful about how our interventions might impact those around us. So as we consider every scale together, not just any scale in isolation, we start to bring together commerce and art. We start to bring together function and experience. And we start to think about how these things play out at the scale of the individual, as well as the scale of com um, communities and cities. So, as Daniel was talking about collaboration, um, and we were talking about how uh, various com no single company can solve all of these problems at once, um, this is an ongoing dialogue. Um, as part of the big design collective, Frog and Arab, um, OMA, um, and other organizations, both private, academic, um, and municipal, are working together to think about how these things might work and how we might best tackle them. 
So given that, uh, we'd love to hear how that conversation play, has been playing out in your head um, and how you might want to con um, contribute. Um, Francesca and Richard weren't able to join us today, um, but if you'd like to contact Daniel and myself, or either of them, um, we'd love to hear from you to hear how, how that uh, resonates with you. Thank you very much.